I'm, I'm not insensate, insensible to the ludicrousness of what I'm about to say, or how ludicrous it sounds, especially to a non-believer. Uh, obviously, a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks, and uh, there's a lot of people who would you know, be considered more towards my side of the, of the of the great divide, who are, are pretty happy about Trump's election over Hillary. And I certainly I am too. I, I, I voted for Trump, but it doesn't change a, uh, a, a, a fundamental truth that judgment is coming to America. And this has been on my heart for a while, and I haven't really been wanting to talk about it because you feel silly. Uh, you know, there's there's these two competing, not competing, but there's these two left and right lateral limits in Christianity where you know false prophets are to be killed. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible sin, uh, but so are uh, ineffective watchmen. So, you know, you, you, you can't err on either side of, of, not, of not talking about it and, and, uh, and saying the wrong thing. But uh, while Trump's election may feel like a reprieve or, or a sign of favor, the truth of the matter is there's been no national repentance. And without repentance, we cannot avoid the coming judgment. Uh, America is different than other nations. Uh, I, I was just looking through some stuff this morning, kind of thinking about this. And uh, every step of the way on our, in our, 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 as our evolution as a country, we were dedicated to God. We were dedicated as a land and a nation whose first and primary purpose was, was to provide the best place possible to live out the Christian faith. Uh, Christopher Columbus, you know, said it, he said, you know, he, he felt like he was led by God to discover the new world uh, in a miraculous way for that very reason. King James, when he, he founded Jamestown or, or signed the, the charter for Jamestown, the, he said the very first purpose of the colony was to promote and expand and, and help perfect the faith. Uh, the Puritans, uh, you know, the Pilgrims, when they came uh, to Plymouth, uh, they, they came with a, a lot of rhetoric about America being the New Jerusalem and the New Israel, and uh, and a place to come and and live their faith out in freedom. Ben Franklin, uh, the Declaration of Independence, uh, the, you know, the Constitution itself wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for a a, a moment of, of humility and repentance by Benjamin Franklin in front of the Continental. Uh, or excuse me, the, con the Constitutional Convention. Uh, George Washington's first inauguration was, was essentially a deeply moving church service where he dedicated the country to God and, uh, and his farewell. And, and every step along the way until the last 100, 150 years, when we've had the opportunity to, to affirm our, who we are, we've chosen to identify ourselves as, as followers of Christ, as Christians. Uh, that that comes with some wonderful blessings if you obey God's uh, uh, commands and His rules. He talks about how He'll bring rains in their season, and your harvest will will uh, won't fail, and, and sickness and disease won't get you, and, and you will never be under uh, uh, domination by foreign powers. But that if you make that covenant with Him and you fail to live up to it, He'll stop the rains. Uh, he'll He'll stop the harvest. You will, you will be ruled by foreigners. Strangers from a foreign land will come to your country and rule over you. Uh, we're starting to see all those things in our nation. Uh, Trump's election was a wonderful thing. Avoiding Hillary Clinton was a wonderful thing. But it doesn't stop the coming judgment. If we want, if we want to avoid the coming judgment, we have to repent. I have to repent. Uh, you have to repent. As a nation, we have to repent. I, I don't see how that can happen. Obviously, it can. He's a big God. He's done it before. But I don't want anyone to start breathing a big sigh of relief and saying, oh, we dodged a bullet. Because our, our country's not great. We have great institutions, and we have a great system of government. But those institutions are great, and our system of government is very effective because God's blessed it, and it's founded on his principles. And you can't, you can't take him out of that. You can't take God out of that and, uh, and just keep the institution because it doesn't work. Uh, and we're starting to see that in our nation. Uh, I was, well, I, I've been reading a lot of stuff here, just this this morning and yesterday, and I'm all kinds of motivated and emotional about it all. But uh, 
anyway, that's what I wanted to say. We're, uh, you know, as as preppers, we're always looking for that uh, that that, uh, that crisis or whatever's coming our way, the emergency uh, that the others we're supposed to be preparing for. I'm I'm telling you, it is my my firm belief. I don't want to be a false prophet here. I don't claim to have, you know, visions or some kind of direct conduit to God, but I can read His Word, and I would encourage you go read Deuteronomy 28. Uh, if you read the chapter Deuteronomy 28, it lays it out as, as clear as day. Uh, we, we have signed on to be God's people. We have covenanted as a nation with God. Uh, we, we, have, we have violated that covenant, and I believe we are subject to the, to the, the penalties in Deuteronomy 28. Go read it. Uh, and, you know, how much can you prepare for judgment? I don't think you can. Uh, I, we've got some examples in scriptures of people preparing, you know, obviously Joseph and, and some other things. So I'm, I, I'm not saying uh, abandon it all. What I'm saying is that, you know, for, at least for those of you Christians out there, and I mean, I've got 32 subscribers, so, you know, I'm not you know, pretending like I've got some global reach or anything. But for those of you Christians out there, keep it in the back of your mind. This ultimately doesn't change anything. It may, it may not even delay anything. You know, it may just be that God's setting this up so that we cannot claim that judgment came because of the liberals or the Democrats. You know, that we have to, to look at the total breakdown of the system or the failure of both ideologies, right and left, and say, you know, without God, nothing works. You know, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't claim to be a prophet. Being a false prophet comes with horrible, horrible uh, uh, curses and penalties. But God's word's pretty clear. You don't you don't have to have visions to know that, uh, that that we've covenanted with God and we've broken our covenant with God, and He will not be mocked. So that's it. Uh, I know lots of guys don't like to hear the the religious stuff, and uh, but I can't divorce it from who I am and what I do. Uh, take it for what it's worth. Please look into it. Look into look into the founding of the nation and see where we covenanted with God. There's where we just. We, we made that promise, and, and we, we made that our stated goal. And, uh, and then look and see how we've violated those covenants over the years. Uh, the, the areas where God will not turn a blind eye is our acceptance of false religions or false, or, you know, false gods. He will not turn a blind eye to abortion. Uh, he will not turn a blind eye to what he describes as adultery, what we, we call divorce. And he, he won't turn a blind eye to our acceptance of homosexuality. I'm not sure, actually, very honestly, I'm not sure about that part. The homosexuality may just be a sign. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. It's definitely not something he's happy about. But it may be by the time we get to that point where we are with uh, the, the gay stuff that it, it's too late. You know, we're already in, we're already past all the places where we made the decisions and, and that's just a symptom, you know. I don't know, but I know what we call divorce and remarriage, he calls adultery, abortion, and then false religions. Uh, and those three things by themselves uh, damn us in his eyes, and, and they're going to require national repentance and, and a turning away, and I, I don't see how that could happen. But like I said, he's a big God, he could do it. Uh, either way, if you don't believe this stuff, you know, throw it out, uh, but, but if you believe that there's a God and that he has some requirements on you, I would ask you to prayerfully consider it. Thank you.